Hey guys, so today I'll be reviewing a book I recently read called The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. So this book is about four people mostly, it mostly focuses on the lives of four people and their romantic relationships with each other. Um, it's set during the Russian occupation of Prague in, I believe it was, the late 1960s. Even though um, it was a time of complete political turmoil, this book doesn't really focus on the political side. Rather, the political stuff is more of a backdrop against which these individual lives are played out. It's really hard, in my opinion, to categorize this book under a specific genre. When I started reading this book, I thought it was just like any other kind of modern literary fiction book, but it has elements of philosophy in it as well. What I mean to say is that the narrative style is very unconventional in the author is very self-aware of the fact that he created the characters to convey his philosophy. And so throughout the book, you get these little philosophical snippets from the narrator's perspective. So it's not necessarily part of the inner dialogue of the characters. It's like the author inserting himself into the story to explain certain philosophical concepts and I know for some people that can be a bit jarring. I think you'll enjoy this book if you like books that have a deeper meaning than just the surface plot and you like reading into the characters actions and the deeper underlying meaning behind things. I think this book is a bit like an onion. There are many many different layers to unpeel and I think I'll be rereading this book again sometime in the future. So this review will be a bit fragmented just like the book is because yeah the chapters themselves are very short. There are only a couple of pages maximum. There's not really a linear plot. The narrator kind of jumps from character to character, from timeline to timeline and so you kind of already know what happens at the end in the middle of the book. But the plot isn't really the main concern of this book. I think the main thing the author was trying to do was he was using these characters as vehicles to express certain philosophical ideas, which I'll go into soon. So in summary, if you're debating whether or not to read this book, I would not recommend reading this book if you're solely after plot or even the characters because they're not super likable in my opinion. There's not much plot driving the characters. That being said, you do come to understand the characters really well from a psychological perspective and you get to understand what their motives are for some of the questionable actions they take. Some characters' motivations were more fleshed out than others. At times I just couldn't quite grasp what the author was trying to get at. Hopefully on my second reading I'll be able to pick up more of what the author was trying to say with the character's actions. So as I said before, this book is like an onion, so I'm gonna go with the first layer first. On the surface level, this book appears to be about the relationship between Tomas and Teresa, who meet randomly one day at a restaurant that, or like a bar that Teresa works at, and they immediately fall in love, and this book kind of just follows the trajectory of their relationship and some of the difficulties that they face. Teresa knows very early on that Tomas isn't loyal to her. When you dive a bit deeper and you go into the primary overarching philosophical concept of this book, which is um, lightness versus heaviness or weight, then you start to appreciate how these characters represent either lightness or heaviness. Teresa, who represents the heavier aspect of life feels tortured by Th Tomas's constant infidelity and Tomas on the other hand feels weighed down by his commitment or his love for Teresa. The novel essentially asks the question of is it better to live a life with commitment to places and people or in other words, a life of weight where everything we do, we give a meaning to and we, we believe that 
the people we love and the you know places we live in the things we do and the things that happen to us we think that everything like that has a deeper meaning and that you know things were meant to happen or is it better to live lightly in the sense that we believe nothing inherently has a meaning because life is impermanent and so none of our actions have any sort of significance um, in the grand scheme of things it's a question of is it better to live lightly or live heavily and from the beginning of the book um, Kandara makes clear that there's no clear answer to this question. He spends the rest of the book um, using the characters to explore the contrast between lightness and heaviness and the different ways in which that plays out in the lives of his characters. Now, before I go into the themes, just know that there are way too many themes and ideas for me to cover. This is just what I took away from the book. The first overarching concept, which I went into earlier is the concept of a lightness versus a weight. From the beginning of the book, I think it's in the first chapter, Kandera rejects the concept of eternal return, which I believe was conceived by Nietzsche. Because we only live once, you know, he rejects the idea of eternal return, our lives don't repeat, and therefore all the actions we take in our one life here on earth lose their significance compared to the time timeline of eternity everything we do or the people we love are ultimately insignificant he rejects the concept of eternal return and concludes that therefore our lives are essentially light and nothing we do inherently has any meaning but then as i mentioned before he questions whether it's better to nonetheless give meaning to things in our lives and commit ourselves to things even though ultimately everything we do is meaningless and won't matter in the end but is it still better to act as if things we do and people we love are important and weighty that brings me to the next main concept this book explores which is fate So basically, you know, is there such a thing as fate or is fate just something we've constructed to give meaning to events as we see fit? We assign meaning to certain random events that don't have any inherent meaning, especially in love. According to Kandera, we notice all these coincidences or events of fate that led us to a particular person. And so we use fate to make ourselves believe that we're meant to be with someone when in fact it's just the meaning we assign to it you know coincidences are actually everywhere we just don't look for them and we don't assign a meaning to random events unless it serves a particular purpose in our life narrative apart from fate and the concept of lightness and heaviness there's also the theme of love the only plot point really is the relationships between these characters and these aren't necessarily the best relationships they're rife with misunderstanding and miscommunication because the characters don't really understand each other they're coming to places things and even words from different angles and these perspectives are formed by their like childhood experiences there's like a section in the middle of the book where Kandara lists a bunch of words and how these two lovers interpret these words completely differently from each other he also goes into the concept of how sex can be separated from love in the sense that sex and love don't always accompany each other and near the end there's even a bit about the love humans have for animals and how that can be a more pure and altruistic sort of love than romantic relationships because we don't really expect anything in return when we love our pets. Um, he writes that you know, true human goodness in all its purity and freedom can come to the fore only when its recipient has no power and that line he's referring to Teresa's love for her dog um, Karenilin. Linking love with fate, Kandera also asks the question of whether we can control who we love or whether love is just a bunch of unconscious 
processes and random events that lead us to a particular person who we latch on to because our childhood experiences have sh has shaped our psychology in a certain way that makes us predisposed to fall in love with them. I think the last note I took down for love was power dynamics in relationships and how there's always a sort of weaker person and stronger person, but the stronger person doesn't necessarily always get his or her way because weakness can be converted into strength in a relationship. Lastly, one of the main things I picked out was happiness and what that is and whether we can find happiness in living lightly or heavily and spoiler alert, Kendara doesn't really answer that question. It seems to me that he believes happiness often exists alongside sadness because a lot of the passages in this book um, felt very melancholic. I really liked this quote, um, the sadness was form, the happiness content, happiness filled the space of sadness. Ultimately though, Kundera believes that we find it really difficult to be happy because according to Kundera, our lives are lived on a linear timeline, whereas happiness is quote um longing for re repetition which we yeah we can't do because we live linearly and we don't really live in a circular timeline which means that no experience can be repeated so to conclude my review of this book i recommend everyone to give it a go i don't think it's for everyone because of its structure and how it's written and some of the ideas do seem a bit abstract at least on my first reading but I think it's a type of book that needs to be read over and over again and each time you can take something new away. It is a very deep book, so it's not exactly light reading. You really do have to pause and think throughout. It's not really a book that you can rush through. So yeah, in my opinion, if you have a bit of time, then I recommend giving this book a go. If you've already read this book before, please let me know in the comments how you found it and what were the main ideas you picked out and your interpretations of the ideas I mentioned because I only have my own interpretation at the moment. I haven't um, researched this book in depth online yet, but I'm looking forward to reading other interpretations of some of these main ideas and characters. Yes, if you have any interesting interpretations of this book, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.